Welcome to the Sinzai Center. For those of you who've been when watching Army and Lehigh and Xavier on their first offensive possession and the first on the board. Jeff Robinson drops the first two after a good first defensive possession by the Musketeers. Brad Johansson alongside Steve Lapis. Happy to have you join us here at the Sintas Center in Cincinnati, Ohio, for a key matchup, Coach, for both teams in the A-10. It is big because both these teams can still come in the top four, which gives you a bye in the first round, which means you only have to win only. I say only. It's still hard. Three games in three days, better than four games in four days. Better than the option, no question about it. Williams, their unquestioned leader. This is what Xavier likes. UMass has to run half-court offense. They have to take their time, which helps. Now, that's not a good defense. They was normally their very solid defensive team, but they like the tempo of the game much slower than UMass does. Samson Carter in the lane to even things up. Samaje Kristen, the freshman leader for the Xavier Musketeers, averaging over 15 a game. Justin Martin, the jumper, is long. The tip from Travis Taylor. You know, one thing that Derek Kellogg saw in that tape of the Xavier win over Memphis was the way they crashed the offensive glass. They must be boxed out. No box out that time by UMass. Down low again, stolen Robinson. Robinson can shoot out there. Robinson will take it right side. Martin looking for three. That's long. Taylor, another rebound. Knocked it off Riley. We'll stay with the Musketeers. And Travis Taylor has been Mr. Double Double. Well, you're going to see here, nobody puts a body on him. He's in, it looks like he's the defensive player in there. He had such good position. Xavier dominated Memphis on the glass 45 to 36 earlier this week. Robinson inside the arc. That's too long. Taylor, his third rebound of the game. Kristen to the glass, and that's too easy. And you just saw what Kristen really does well, which is get the ball into the lane. He's only made four threes all year, but he's still able to drive into the basket. You would think UMass laying off would be difficult for him to drive, but he still gets there. Terrell Vincent, double team. Back to Williams for the out. See, this tempo is not what UMass wants at all. Vincent, foot on the line, Phil Moore the rebound. Kristen having to lead the show inside the arc. Robinson is long. Another rebound. Phil Moore back up. That's too long, the tip from Taylor. I mean, this looks like a video re tape replay of what Xavier did to Memphis the other night, especially at the start of the game. They just destroyed him on the glass. And really, UMass that time didn't go for that ball real hard. They kind of let it hit the ground. Got to go after it hard. And that not good help defense right there either. And then you're going to see here another opportunity. The lane has to get him out of the lane. He's had him, he had him pushed under the basket. You got to put him, if somebody's got you under the basket, there's no way as a defensive player you can get a rebound there. The lane was pushed way under the basket there. That's why he gave up that offensive rebound. Travis Taylor, number one in rebounding, averaging just short of nine rebounds a game in the A-10. They now have five offensive rebounds. Taylor has four of them, six second chance points. That is a recipe for disaster for the Minutemen. You see the eye file on Travis Taylor and the numbers he's put up. Nine double-doubles already this year. He was rookie of the year in the Northeast Conference and he transferred from Monmouth and has had a very, very good career here. Williams into the paint and get the foul. And that's what the Minutemen want. I will say this, I know Derek Kellogg has done a great job at UMass, but he has to be upset with his team. These guys are fighting for an NCAA bid, and they come out in the first three and a half minutes and do that on the glass after they saw Xavier do the exact same thing two days ago. Disaster. 
Brad Redford set to check in. I mentioned that Kristen had to lead this team in the very beginning because D. Davis, their starting point guard, did not start today. Sat out the Memphis game because of a concussion. Practiced the last two days in non-contact drills. And they say good to go, but obviously his minutes not up to par and probably his situation because of not playing for a week. Gotta get the lungs in shape as well. Right on the temple he got from Melvin Johnson. Yeah, that was just a fluke shot that he took on the head there. But one thing, Brad, they really need him because he's a second ball handler. Redford is a shooter. He's not a ball handler. So really, right now, they have Samaj and Kristen and four guys that aren't great ball handlers. That's why Dean Davis is so important, especially against a team like UMass that wants to turn you over and wants to get up and down. Yeah, D without question. Their main ball handler, the sophomore from Bloomington. And pressure coming from the Minutemen. 13 foul on UMass. Kristen into the paint. Wanted Redford, got fouled by Chaz Williams. Had Redford wide open in the corner, and he is their three-point specialist. He was open, and he saw it. I wasn't crazy about Samaje leaving his feet in that situation at the top of the key to make that pass. They were very lucky that a foul was called. That is the second personal on Chaz, and the key to their game is now sitting on the bench. That is a huge second foul 16 minutes ago. I'm going to bet that Derek Kellogg is going to have him back in, though, and not keep him out for the entire half. It's too long to sit out, because when you come back in the second half, a lot of times you sit out this long, you never get back into the flow. Trey Davis in for him, averages about 25 minutes a game. Kristen. Working on Escho, got him up in the air, got the whistle. That's a mismatch of speed. You know, it's amazing, though, for a guy who's only taken four threes all year, how easy he gets into the lane. That tells you how good and how quick Samaj Kristen is. Because he can back off of him and give him some space because he's not a threat from the three-point line. That's going to be a big key in his development. He's four for 24 from the three-point line this year. How good a shooter he becomes is going to be critical to his development. And he has struggled at the free-throw line, surprisingly. Only a 64% free-throw shooter. And when you take 150-plus free-throws, that's a big thing. And they've, they've been in so many close games this year, this Xavier team. They're young. They don't have a lot of ball handlers. Chris Mack's done a very good job keeping this team kind of around the bubble. He looks confident from the line there and an eight-point early lead for the Musketeers. Raphael Putney in for his first moments as well. And Escha walks. The Minutemen struggling. Xavier on top by eight in the early going. Weather conditions aren't nearly as nice as where we came from, but the wind chill is 10 below. But attendance for fair play. We have record lows out there, so bundle up and thank you for flying with us. Now with my Buick Remote Start, the new Buick Enclave makes sure you're ready for anything. Just one more way, the new Enclave is smart, made, beautiful. Okay, here's the way the system works. Let's say you pay your guy around 2% to manage your money. That's not much, you think, except it's 2% every year. Does that make a difference? Search cost of financial advisors. Ouch! Over time, it really adds up. Then go to E-Trade and find out how much our advice costs. Spoiler alert, it's low. Really? Yes, really. E-Trade offers investment advice and guidance from dedicated professional financial consultants. It's guidance on your terms, not ours. That's how our system works. E-Trade, less for us, more for you. Wind, power, and torque, maximum capability and versatility, and comfortable seating for four. The off-road rated Terex 4 side-by-side. -side. How can it get any better? How about no interest for 48 months or a $1,000 purchase incentive? Better. Right now, get no interest for 48 months or a $1,000 purchase incentive on all Terex 4s. Don't wait. This offer ends March 31st.
College Basketball on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. By Franklin Templeton Investments. Gain from our perspective. And by Werner Ladder. Werner, number one in ladders. 10-2, Xavier with the early lead. Time for our Northwestern Mutual planning for success. Let's see how Coach Chris Mack is planning for success. Brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Here's what he said about Chaz Williams. The way to stop UMass, stopping Chaz Williams. End of story. He may be the most dynamic point guard in college basketball. Do you agree? Oh, he's tremendous. And they've done a great job because he's got two fouls. The best way to stop him is to have him sitting on the bench. And right now, that's where Chaz Williams is. That's not good for UMass because he's involved in just about everything that they do on both sides of the ball. You see his eye file. He is the only player in the country to average those numbers, 15, 7, and 4. That's pretty spectacular. He's a dynamic player and a dynamic leader. Martin gets it across by himself, Coach. And when you play against a team that's so good defensively like Xavier is, you need your field general. They got a moving pick on Travis Taylor. And a turnover for the Musketeers. Xavier foul number four is Travis Taylor. How about dominating the glass, Coach? Uh, oh, eight to nothing? Brad, foul, it's unbelievable. Foul, eight to zero. Five of them on the offensive glass. That's where Derek has to question what his guys came out of that locker room ready to do. Now, they got plenty of time to get back into this thing, but not a good start on the road. Terrell Vincent on Martin. Step back and drains it. To the basket to number 33. He's been on fire lately, especially from the three-point line, getting better and better. You know, they've had to adjust. They lost their second-best player, Jesse Morgan, to a bad ACL injury. And now they've had to readjust at the end of the year. It's not like it happened in January, beginning of January. It happened kind of late. So now they're just starting to find their stride without Kristen weaves his way. Martin for three. Can't get the roll. I'm surprised Xavier's taking quite a few threes for them. They don't usually take a lot of threes. They only make about four a game. Putney, that's in and out. Knocked out by Lalane, but they will say Martin was the last to touch it. It will stay with a minute man. Derek Kellogg trying to get his offensive sets going now. A lot of times when you go on the road, you are forced to beat the team that you're playing at their tempo because it's just hard to force your tempo when you're on the road. That's just the way it is. Vincent spinning on Martin, had it blocked, and that's Travis Taylor's second foul. Nope, they will call it on Martin. So bailed out is number four, who looked like he had him on the arm. On the line for UMass shooting two, number 33, Terrell Benson. So Vincent will head to the line. 71, or I should say 67% free throw shooting. Take a look at what the Road Warriors have done. 9 of 13 is a pretty good record on the road. They've been very, very good on the road. They score those seven points a game more at home than they do on the road on neutral courts. So that tells you quite a bit right there. Well, their last six games, they seem to have found their offense. Coming into here, over the last six, they had upped their average per game by 10 points. But right now, struggling, trailing by four. Kristen with the dump to Taylor, who's fouled. That is how you break a team spirit that likes to press all the time. You've got to attack pressure. The only thing that can make a team pay for pressing you is by you attacking and getting fouled and getting to the basket. And here, that's not textbook, but when you got a good guard, that's a good way to do it. Just dribble through everybody, and that's what Samaj A. Kristen did there. Samson Carter picks up his second. I think this pressure could help Xavier because Xavier has struggled to score this year. And what the pressure does, it kind of opens up the floor a little bit more where they can, where Samaj and Kristen can take advantage of his abilities to put it on the ground and get somewhere. This could help Xavier's offense. Carter sits, Lelane back in. Eric Stanger coming over from NKU for his first minutes as Isaiah Fillmore sits. Taylor good on one of two. And a 
whistle away from the ball, and it looks like they got Eric Stanger down low on the lane. Wow. I, 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 I kind of had my eyes down there, and I didn't see anything. A little much for the whistle? I, you know, that is not a foul. <laughs> that is not a foul. And we got a tee already on the bench. They got Chris Mack for that one. Hey, you know what? I got to be honest with you. I can't blame Chris Mack. I thought that was, you could call that foul on every post up in the entire game. I'll pick out 30 of them. I get it, Brett. I will pick out minimum 30 of those plays in the course of this game. He's not real happy with Tony Crisp. <laughs> Walked up and down, still eyeballing him. He wants you know eye contact. And the worst part is, that, he, that the ref tees him also. It's once, you know, he should have realized maybe that wasn't a great call and let it go. Let Chris Mack go. And I think that's what officials need to do. They need to walk away sometimes. But that was not a good tee, and it was not a good foul. Vincent, one of two on the tees, and they have the possession. So Xavier starting 10 to 2. It's a 5 1 run now for the Minutemen. outside and over the back they're gonna get Lelaine and that's a foul <laughs> you'll give him that one I'll give him that one that's his first but already 16 fouls for UMass at the 1404 mark follow away from heading into the bonus fans are funny I heard a fan behind us yell hey ref you still owe us a couple <laughs> the game just started they owe a couple already <laughs> Christian into the paint. Dump to Taylor on the block, working on Vincent. Just backs him in and two feet away with the left hand. I can't imagine how he, you can't, can you get an easier basket? No. I mean, Vincent's a pretty big, strong kid. Why wouldn't he body him back? That's a 6'7", 220 body that he backed into a foot away. Man. Down low to Lelaine. He's got the body on Stanger, but Taylor with the swat. Esho in and out, tip. Stanger comes down with a rebound. Kristen to run. Corner, Martin, and he walked. <laughs> Missed opportunity for the Musketeers, but let's take a look at the block, coach. Yeah, I mean, Lelaine takes the ball up strong. Just a very nice block on the help side by Travis Taylor. Taylor has been active on both ends of the glass. I'm curious as to when Derek, I think he brings uh, Chaz Williams back in with eight minutes to go. Davis dumped, stolen. They're lost without him. Martin to the glass, got it. Right back. Riley in and out, rebound Lelaine, and he got the put back. That was a really good play by Lelaine because they got it up quickly, and Lelaine ran the floor hard to put himself in position to get that offensive re rebound. I like him. He's going to be a very, very good player. He already is a good player. Fillmore, a good ball handler for his big body. Wide open here. Steps in, will continue to go to the glass and get the foul. There was just no defense stepping up on him. In transition, Justin Martin didn't have the numbers, but he didn't care. You know, they'll run opportunistically, and really not enough. Well, Esho, Esho got knocked in the knee, and that's why he kind of didn't go after that at all. Now, Coach, that's two on Lelaine, and the seventh team foul. Fillmore misses on the first, and D. Davis will check in for the first time. Justin Martin to take a seat. And UMass goes to Tyler Bergantino, who's averaging about three minutes a game. So uh, they, they're at, they're going deep into that bench right now because of these fouls. And Chaz Williams came back a little bit earlier than I thought, but a lot of that's got to do with Trey Davis not really being effective. Phil Moore missed them both. Williams back on the floor with Putney, Esho, Bergantino, and Riley. Putney. High arcing three is way long. Fillmore the rebound, and Davis will take it. Kristen on the run. Challenge Williams. Stanger the rebound, got it swatted. 
He collects, gets it back to Davis Redford for three. Oh, yeah. You know how some guys, when they shoot it, you just know what's going in? That's the guy. <laughs> That's the guy. Nine point lead. Escho into the paint, off balance, and got it off glass. Nice play right there by Escho. He's a very athletic kid. Got to work on his shooting a little bit too, but I like what I see from him. Redford again, working inside the arc. Takes very few two-point shots. Davis with the dump down to Stanger. He's double teamed. We'll back it out to Davis for the high arcing three. That's long. Fillmore collects. Has it knocked away by Williams? Saved by Fillmore. Redford, one more. Got a walk. Oh, wow. I thought he stepped into that pretty good. Chris Mack cannot believe it. Redford can't believe it. Stanger really gets after that ball. And look at this guy. When he shoots it, you swear it's going in. It was designed to escape the ordinary. It feels like it can escape gravity. The 2013 C-Class Coupe. Starting at 37,800. Who thinks more is better than less? Okay, why? More is better than less because if stuff is not less, if there's more less stuff, then you might you might want to have some more, and your parents just don't let you because there's only a little bit. Right. We want more. We want more. Like you really like it. You right. want more. I follow you. It's not complicated. More is better, and AT and T has the nation's largest 4G network. Wish the tournament lasted longer. I'd love it here. Longer. Longer it is. <laughs> Fast break. How can you tell? Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Spear, Sports, and the official hangout of March Madness. <laughs> Wrong button. 18-11 lead for the Xavier Musketeers at the Cintas Center. Both of these coaches fortunate enough to be coaching at their alma mater. Chris Mack went through a bunch of injuries. He's a tough player. Derek Kellogg at UMass, 91-95. There are 28 total in Division I of coaches at their alma mater. Here's the 10 most notable, maybe. And I think only one of these coaches didn't play at his alma mater. You can't hold me to it. I think only one <laughs> was not a player at his school. That's a good list. All right, you tell me, Coach, did Redford walk on this before he drained that triple? Yeah, he took a couple of baby steps. You're going to see, right? That's a walk. Yes. That's a good call. If he'd have stepped in hard with his left foot, he would not have traveled there. But he kind of wasn't sure about his footing, and that's why he traveled, and he did. Yeah, he Neither one of us in real time thought that that was a walk. No, I didn't either. A lot easier to figure it out when you have the replay. <laughs> so give props to Kenneth Clark on that call. Eshu in the corner. Vincent lost it. Fillmore on the floor. Vincent recollects. And Fillmore with the rebound. Cintas Center, Cincinnati, Ohio, Xavier and UMass, Brad Johansson alongside the coach Steve Lapis. And another moving screen. They got it on D. Davis this time. Fourth turnover for the Musketeers, which coach you said was going to be a key in this one. You know, that's not the kind of turnover that'll kill you, though, even though it's a foul. They don't want steals. That's the thing they need to avoid more than anything else when UMass gets easy transition baskets. Davis on Williams, stolen by Martin. And he is fouled by Williams, picks up his third. 
Wow. 10.08 mark. Chaz Williams walks head down directly to the bench. I mean, why would he even think about doing that? The big reason why Derek Keller put him back in the game was he's a junior, a fourth year junior, because the transfer who really should understand better that he should have been nowhere near that. He should have just run him back on defense and given that ball up. A reminder, Chaz Williams last year, February 21st, 29 points against the Musketeers. A career high for him with six three-pointers. I mean, that's a killer foul. And I don't blame Derek Kellogg for putting him back in. You would think a junior is not going to pick. You usually worry about a guy getting a charge. Okay, you get a charge, it could happen. All but right, can't get a reach. You're the coach. Does he have to sit the rest oh, of the yeah, half? Oh, yeah, he's done now for the half, absolutely. Completely done. Putney almost threw it away, saved by Riley. And a late whistle. They'll get that one on Redford and Davis going into Redford to collect that whistle. Yeah, I mean, that's not a good foul there. Obviously, if you stay on the ground, that's always the best thing to do because, you know, Trey Davis is not, he's made one three point shot all year. So there's an example of where Chris Mack, you want to tell him. Why are you leaving on a shot fake from the three-point line for a guy who's playing in his 26th game and he's got one three on the season? Is this why coaches always say, know who you're guarding? Yeah, and don't leave your feet, too. That comes next. <laughs> Davis good on the first two. Averaging only 2.3 on the year. He's got three on that play. Yeah, that's, that's a killer foul. Knocked away by Escher. And, and Brad Redford's a senior. It's not like he's afraid. He knows the scouting report, and I'm sure he knows it very, very well. It's a six-point lead for the Musketeers as they dominate the glass. Now you know why Chris Mack has no hair <laughs> and why mine turned gray. <laughs> but Kellogg looks good. He hasn't gotten it yet. I don't know why. He's hanging on to it pretty well. <laughs> Redford out to help. Davis inside of Fillmore. Working on Escho. Double team comes. Half hook won't go. And it will stay with the Musketeers. I'm a little surprised at how easily the Xavier kids are backing their way to like layups. I mean layups. You gotta fight him a little bit or don't let him catch it so easy. Either you gotta fight him when he catches it or don't let him catch it so easy or double. Well, they're backing, backing, backing without any resistance. How many times have we seen it so far? Brad? Probably four. Inside, Fillmore takes it to the glass and will collect one more from Putney. The ninth team foul on the Minutemen. And with 9.27 left in the first half, we're one away from double bonus. Well, you're going to see here, this That's is a complete miscommunication. Got to talk that out. Already 12 points in the paint for the Musketeers to UMass's six. And Fillmore misses his third consecutive free throw. You know, this Xavier team, as you know, Brad, they did, a, they did a number on Memphis in the paint. And Memphis is as athletic and as tough a team as you're going to find in the country. And the Xavier team is not nearly as explosive offensively as Memphis is. And they did a heck of a job. Fillmore has missed four straight. And a walk before the offensive foul call. See, I don't think that's a great pass by Trey Davis. I think he gave the big guy, he put the big guy, Esho, in a bad spot. He shouldn't have passed him this ball because he was going to have a, either travel or charge. And if they didn't call it travel, it would have been a charge. Fifth turnover on the Minutemen. Missed opportunities on both ends. Xavier, as they have in many games this year, struggling from the free throw line, giving away free points. Redford blocked, easily blocked by Putney. Yeah, he went into a bad spot. He went in the deep corner, too small to do that against a very big athletic team. We're getting into Escho, and a walk again, another turnover. Number six. Chris Mack is ready to hang Redford. First he fouls the guy from three, then he goes into the deep corner over there. He just gave it to him pretty good. Chris having a tough first half. 
<laughs> he's not really no, I happy think he's having a pretty good other time. than the scoreboard, right? <laughs> That's all that matters, really. <laughs> Kristen out top. I think it's Redford that's having the tough first half. You may be right on that. And he'll have a tougher halftime from Chris yes. Backing in again is Taylor. Get some help from Escho. That time they fought Vincent fought him a little bit there. Now he's fighting. That's good defense. Taylor got the roll. That was good defense, though. It made him make a fadeaway jump shot under, you know, under duress. Okay, that's not bad. Vincent for three. Answers. Minutemen needed that. Their last field goal came at 11.32 before Vincent drains the triple. The dump off from D. Davis, and he threw it away, trying to get Fillmore. Well, Travis Taylor, the A-10 in this, this new conference, it's about basketball. Both these conferences now are about basketball here, first, and that's Barr, great to have. And those teams purported to take the name the Big East with them. We'll find out a little bit later on this week how it all shakes out. And believe me, we're not done with realignment in college sports. Davis for three. How about this kid wow. today? I guess I guess he's a better three-point shooter than we thought, even though he had one coming into the game. He's got six now, triple his season average. Get it ahead. Taylor will go glass and poorly. And James Farr in the game, a rare moment for him to get in. Putney from Davis. And just like that, we're all knotted up at 22. An 11 2 UMass run. They like getting it into the open floor and pushing it and shooting threes in transition and taking it to the basket. Taylor almost threw it away. Kristen saves. Now working into the paint. James Farr for three. His high-arcing triple won't go. Martin, and it will stay here. And let's see who the foul is on. It's on you, man. They love throwing these lobs in transition. And Putney, he gets up there. And he's so long and athletic. A great pass, too, by the way. Trey Davis having to sub for Chaz Williams. I would say he's doing admirable work. He has definitely picked it up in his last few minutes. And they're going to need him because he's going to get extended time today with 622. He's definitely going to be finishing the half now, too. Martin good on the first. D. Davis will check in for Brad Redford. Xavier led this game 20 to 11 at the 10:08 mark. You know when you struggle to score, it's hard. You know even look what happened. They should they could have beat VCU. They ended up you know not being able to close that one out. They just about closed out Memphis, who they were up big on in right. that game. So when you struggle to score, that's what happened. That's why they've been in so many close games this year. So the key to their offense takes a seat, and they've found their offense without him. That three won't go. Kristen wants to run. He has D. Davis on the other side, gets him cornered for the triple. Too long. Riley the rebound. He wants to run. Got it ahead to Davis, who will launch. Oh. Got another one. Wow. Trey Davis with his second triple and a three-point foul. And I just looked, I made a mistake before. He didn't have one on the year. He had three in 26 games prior to this game. First lead for the Minutemen. Martin answers. Vincent into the paint. And a foul. If they're going to get Taylor, that will be his second. Finding some offense, Coach. Well, you know, this is not an easy three to come down in transition and just hop step right into it. And then Martin, who is, 
the second best three-point shooter for Xavier behind Redford. They need him to knock some out. Trey Davis doesn't have that prototypical three-point shot. When he lets it go, like you say, when you see Redford let it go, you know it's good. You have some questions about Trey Davis's delivery. Absolutely. But it's been effective today. Vincent Good on the first. Stanger and Fillmore to check in. Far and Taylor to sit for the Musketeers. I mean, if UMass can get out of this half, even down four with, with Chaz Williams sitting out that much, they'll have done a pretty good job. Kristen's going to run. Take Riley to the hoop. Vincent with some help. Stanger the rebound. Get it back out to Davis. Continuing to crash the glass, the Musketeers with another second chance. Shot clock. Down low, Stanger got fouled. And they will get Putney on this. That's his second personal foul. Second foul on Putney. Stanger has been almost essential for this team that lost members. Hey, join us tonight at 10 Eastern for the Built Ford Tough Series. Dickey's Iron Cowboy 4 presented by Windstar World Casino. It is the PBR Built Ford Tough Series on CBS Sports Network. The 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Fillmore tried to keep it alive. Esho collects. Two-point lead for the Musketeers. Cross court Riley. Davis on Davis. Steps inside the arc. That one's off. Martin the rebound. He's being very aggressive offensively for a guy averaging as little as he is. When you feel it, you feel it, coach. I guess. When you feel it, it's got to go in like a little more often. <laughs> Kristen in the paint with a dump to Stanger, and he lost the handle. Kristen saves. He dumps to Fillmore. How many loose balls have they picked up around their best? They seem to be getting every loose ball. Hustle points for the Musketeers. Eschel working on Fillmore. Back outside. Vincent will take it in the paint. Davis. Dump. Eschel easy. Nice pass. Davis will slow this possession down. Martin for three. In and out, Fillmore, nobody near him. And an intentional foul. Davis not happy with that. They are dominating the glass, are the Musketeers. They aren't necessarily dominating the scoreboard anymore. There's so much to like about this Buick LaCrosse. Sophisticated styling, fresh technology, and 36 MPG Highway. Like my mom said the day I was born, wow, that's a lot more than I expected. If you don't know the luxurious yet fuel efficient LaCrosse, you don't know Buick. Lease this EPA estimated 36 Highway MPG LaCrosse with two years of scheduled maintenance for around $299 per month. 
Consider it a new lease on luxury. Welcome back to the Cintas Center. 30-28, the Musketeers lead. Let's take a look at the Avis key stats of the game. Well, the big thing is, obviously, paint points, where Xavier has done a number on the glass. 16 points in the paint, the 10. And Trey Davis, what a job this guy has done so far in this game. Coming in averaging two points a game. Coming in with only three three-point shots made all year. Only one in the Atlantic 10. Making threes. Three assists also in the game. And they needed a lift because their guy, their main man, is an out most of the half with three fouls now. So they're going to need Trey Davis. Take a look at the last play as we walk down the court. Chaz Williams sits on. And an intentional foul called on this one. You agree? Oh, there's no way. I mean, that was unnecessary. All he, had to, all he had to do was hack him on the arm and send him to the free throw line for two shots to grab him like that. Now they're going to get two shots and the ball. Not a good play by Trey Davis. Davis. And I don't know if he's complaining that it was an intentional foul because that really absolutely 100% was. Getting the explanation from Tony Crisp. He's been right in the middle of a few controversial calls already in the first half. He's making everybody happy today. <laughs> Phil Moore, who missed four straight at the free throw line, making five. Well, as you know, Brad, this team is only a 65% free throw shooting team for the season, so they've gotten hurt by not making free throws this season, especially as many close games as they've been in. One of six, not a real strong percentage. They have missed a ton of opportunity at the line, up by three. Nine of 16. I mean, it's amazing that they have 12 offensive rebounds already in this game. Who are they going to break a record? Inside to Robinson. Tough time collecting. Lost it. Here comes Davis the other way. Ahead to Riley, and he could not collect off his leg. It will be Xavier basketball. That ball was so low. That would have been a very hard ball to pick up and do, and do anything with, except just kind of secure it. The amount of missed opportunities on offensive sets for both teams in the first half, rather staggering. Vincent tried to draw an offensive foul on Martin. Kristen into the paint, off balance. That's what he does best. Too big for Trey Davis there. Stretch it to a five-point lead. Deep Riley drains the triple. You know, Redford did not do a good job. Riley's been playing averaging 14 points a game his last seven games. That time, Redford didn't do a good job of coming out on that screen. Redford back in the game. Christian. And they got a T. That's the second T in the first half. Got one on each coach. I don't know what he said, but Derek definitely wasn't like, you know, running up and down, going crazy. Tony's not uh, putting up with a whole lot today. Yeah, you know what, though? <laughs> These guys are, you know what? I'm, I'm going to defend the coaches, okay? Which is surprise, surprise, right? I'm shocked by <laughs> that. This is how these guys make their living. You, you got to accept a certain amount. Now, I don't know. Maybe Derek said one of the buzzwords, which you can't say. And I don't think he's did. But you're saying give him a little rope. You got to give guys rope. This is how they are making their living. They are living and dying with every play in the game. Got to take some. No, you don't have to take it all the way. You got to come to a point where it's got to stop. But you got to take something. Did That's you, just the nature of ever get a technical oh. call on <laughs> No, never. Yeah, I, I had a few. Another bunny missed by Robinson on the inbound. And I had a few that were deserved and some that weren't deserved. On the floor, Davis, Bergantino collects, and he's too long off the glass. The inside four feet percentage is not good today on both ends. They've had their share of easy ones. Redford may have got a piece of that one, Riley. 
And it will stay with Xavier. Hey, coming up on AT&T at the half, Adam Zucker. Alab Dolnavi, Wally Zerbiak, John Rothstein. They're all going to get you caught up on the top 25 action around the country. Plus, first half highlights and stats from here. So that's so much more on AT&T at the half. Well, you said Kristen was going to be the guy, and he's going to be the guy down the stretch. He has been the guy for this Xavier Musketeer team that has struggled to find offense. What do you think of him today? You know what I like? I like the fact that he's got no turnovers in the game. I mean, he has a one-to-one -one assist to turnover ratio, which is not good for a point guard. But for a freshman, it's understandable. But lately, he's been much better. Five assists and one turnover against Memphis. We know he can score. He can get in the lane anytime he wants. He's got good size. He's athletic. But you know what'll help him get in the lane more? If he can really improve his perimeter shooting. Now it will become extremely hard to guard. But I like the decision making that he's making today. Now the number two scoring freshman you see behind Byron Larkin as you see all of those freshmen and what they've averaged along the way. Pretty good company to be in. Byron Larkin averaged 17 as a freshman. Fillmore. Working on Eshoo on the block. He'll back him in. And step and walk. It's a head shaker, coach. Definitely. Drives you nuts on both ends to give up the opportunities that both teams have. Well, the Minutemen have found their scoring from behind the arc late after starting 0 for 4. They're 4 for 5 from 3. Riley will try and add another and can. Esho the rebound. Backs it out to Davis. He'll take it to the glass. Short tip is good by Vincent. One thing you see often is a drive leads to an offensive rebound because somebody comes over to help on Trey Davis and nobody boxes out that guy's man. Under a minute to play in the first half. Two point lead for the Musketeers. Kristen. Inside tries to draw the foul. Can't get it. It's loose. It will stay with Xavier. Sometimes Kristen, he ends up taking some tough shots in the lane there. Where questionable? Kinda, yeah, kind of gets, that's the second one that he's taking questionable so far tonight. 11 on the shot clock. Just and that, this is the worst place to take the ball out of bounds. Very difficult spot right there. Foul there on Fillmore. Running floater. Bergantino the rebound. They need to get the last shot of the half here. And they will call a foul on Kristen. Both teams now in the double bonus. First on Samaje. I tell you, you see some things in this game like that'll drive you nuts as a coach. That's not a good foul, obviously. 22 seconds to go and 23 seconds to go in the half. Guys out almost at half court. It's double bonus. You want to make them at least work for their last shot. Davis has been the spark for the Minutemen in the first half. Now in double digits. Bergantino the rebound. They can hold it. That was smart for him to pull that out, not you. Bergantino with a pick. Back to Vincent. Working on Martin. Knocked away. It will stay with you. Coach. I, you know, without Chaz Williams, they're going to get it to Vincent or Riley. It's Riley for three. It's long. And Xavier will take a one point lead into the locker room. It wasn't pretty.
not a good one because that was an unfortunate. For 14 butts, of those seven turnovers, only one is a steal by UMass. UMass tried to turn you over by getting steals and getting easy baskets. They haven't gotten a whole lot with steals in this game. Xavier with possession first. And Taylor lost it off his leg, so there's their eighth turnover. And that's not a good one, because that was an unforced error there. They can't give up possessions, because this Xavier team, they're one of the two best defensive teams in the league with St. Louis, but they are offensively challenged. Chaz Williams with three fouls to start the second half. Vincent looking down low to the lane, and he got fouled. Fillmore got him, he'll go to the line. Set play coming out of the locker room that Derek Kellogg set up at halftime. They wanted to get the ball inside to the lane here. He gets very good position and finishes that around the basket. That is a good play to come out of the locker room at halftime. Caddy Lelane, sophomore out of Orlando. Third in the A-10 in rebounding. Five double-doubles this year. Collects the three-point plays. 62% field goal shooting in the A-10. And over his last three, he's double-doubled. 16 points, 10 rebounds. He had to sit a bunch of the first half with two fouls. Took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say that, Brad. They played without Chaz Williams. And they also had to play without the lane for a long time, too. Now, that's two turnovers and two possessions for Xavier. The ninth turnover of the game, as you see, the goose eggs for Chaz in the first half. That's incredible. Inside stripped. Then Kristen off his leg. Riley into the paint. That was a double dribble. Vincent may have walked. Got away with one, and they'll call another foul on Jeff Robinson. Tough start for the Musketeers. Very tough. You must be very aggressive. And I don't know what Derek said to them at halftime, but whatever it was, they came out of here with the right kind of fire. Vincent will go to the line. For you, man, shooting two, number 33, Terrell Vincent. He's off on the first. Vincent with 11 points. And he misses a pair. And Xavier knocks it out of bounds. It will stay with a minute man. What happened to free throw shooting? It, it drives me nuts in college basketball. You know, there was a time like 25 years ago where if you were if you weren't a 70% free throw shooting team, you were off. Now you see guys under 70% all the time. All over the place. Vincent in the paint. Dumps to the corner. That one kicked. Carter trying to find somebody on the inbound and does with Vincent. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. Carter down to the lane and a walk. He was working on Travis Taylor and had the move. I think they need to get a shot off on this possession. That would probably be a good thing if you want to add points. <laughs> and they threw it away again. Well, it's not what I was looking for. <laughs> and I'm sure that's not what Chris Mack was looking for even more so. That's three straight possessions to start the second half. And the fans are getting tired here, Coach. See, a Cintas, they, they don't sit down until you score a point well, to start gonna, the second half. They hopefully will not be up for a while. Corner, Carter, that's off. Fillmore the rebound. Another one. Hot potato. Williams on the other end. He still can't get his first points. And these guys still haven't taken a shot yet. That one will stay with Xavier. And, and you know, all right, missed some shots. They haven't even taken a shot yet. <laughs> Ball run out of bounds, last touch. 
31 left on the shot clock. They can't even decide who's going to inbound the ball. Inside Fillmore, he'll get one off and in. Everybody and we're tied up again. Everybody's happy they can sit down now. <laughs> That's a tough go. Two and a half minutes in. And lucky for them, they're in a tie game. Two and a half minutes, they didn't take a shot. Vincent, triple. He's tough. He's got good size. He's got a good stroke. Easily ahead. Taylor, corner. Redford, triple. Answer. If there's one guy that you have to find if you're UMass when you're pressing, it's Redford. Knotted up at 40. It may be ugly, coach, but we have ourselves a game. I wonder how many he makes shooting drills for. Carter, blocking foul on Taylor. Third foul on Taylor. Oh, that was close. That could have been a charge. He thought he had good position. I thought he did. Another miss at the line. UMass 9 of 18 from the free throw strike. Fillmore working on Vincent. Effective. Very strong there. I mean, because Vincent was fighting him that time. He wasn't giving up the spot that easily. Carter down to the lane. No call. Saved by Samaje Kristen to Robinson and gets it back. Kristen on the baseline to Redford. Robinson half hook in the paint. That was like half like old Kareem type move from way back. Just not quite as effective as Kareem. Riley for three. That's where the points are coming from. Beyond the arc. Riley has really taken advantage of Morgan being hurt and now being the star. He's averaging 14 in his last seven games. Redford wanted it coming off the screen. Bad pass, couldn't collect. Kristen into the paint. Off balance and off the glass. That is a great move. Xavier back within one. Corner, Carter, Long fighting for the rebound. And the free man is Kristen in a foul. They get a double foul on Robinson and Vincent. We'll take a break at 14.52 in the second half. Well, UMass could make a three for a while, but this Freddie Riley, he knows how to light it up. And then on the other end, all you can say is Samashe. Here we go. Napa know-how? Helps you do the job right. Try it. Make sure factory timing marks line up correctly. Okay. And inspect the cam and crank seals. But what if I have a really big project? Frank, need to know it all. Auto axles, radiators, brake system starters, come on. Compressors, electrical systems, bring it. Thanks, Frank. You know we have keychains, too. Oh. Hello. V-twin power and torque maximum capability and versatility, and comfortable seating for four. The off-road rated Terex 4 side-by-side. -side. How can it get any better? How about no interest for 48 months or a $1,000 purchase incentive? Better. Right now, get no interest for 48 months or a $1,000 purchase incentive on all Terex 4s. 
Don't wait. This offer ends March 31st. Weather conditions aren't nearly as nice as where we came from, but the wind chill is 10 below. Flight attendants, prepare for it. We have record loads out there, so bundle up and thank you for flying with us. Now with my Buick Remote Start, the new Buick Enclave makes sure you're ready for anything. Just one more way, the new Enclave is smart, made, beautiful. College basketball on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be the official financial planning partner of the NCAA. D'Artagnan, the Xavier mascot, standing steady through the snow outside the Cintas Center, a one-point game. UMass with the lead as we take a look at the Barbasol slam of the night, and Trey Davis set it up, Coach. And it was a great pass, and Raphael Putney running the floor. He's so long and athletic, you don't even have to throw a great pass. That was a very good pass, though, by the way. But when you run the floor, good things happen. So you got to put pressure on, on those passers when they try to throw those alley-oops. No pressure on the ball there, but a nice play. Xavier basketball after the double foul, and there is some foul trouble. Certainly in the first half for the Minutemen, and now Robinson has four for the Musketeers. Jazz Williams done a good job so far of staying in. What you worry about with a guy with three fouls is him picking up a charge. Fillmore to inbound. Xavier struggling to get it in this time. Got it to Christian. He's going to try and does by himself. Can't get it to go. Christian's got it back. Lost it again. Fillmore's foul. And there may be an elbow. We may see some video here. They teed up Fillmore for the elbow. Vincent caught one in the chops. Yeah, he did. He's reaching over, and Fillmore, boom. his mouth as if he's hitting the mouth. I'm not so sure he got hit in the mouth. I, I'm not sure either because I'm, I'm sitting there saying we're getting all these great looks from our guys and I just... Ooh, they're a little acting there. Wow. This may be the best look we have here. There's no elbow that came up. No, it was down. And then hit him, I don't understand. If he hit him with anything, he hit him with his shoulder. Right. Because the arm is down, right? The arm's it, down. Isn't that how it looks to There's you? no question. Arm never comes up. Passed just barely outside his body. Certainly wasn't a flung elbow. Teed up for an elbow. And they're saying waving it off. No elbow. So there's no T now? I mean, he called the T right away. Tony Crisp coming over to talk to us. 31's going to shoot two. No contact, nothing else. 31 shoots two. Foul with on 31. No T. No technical foul. Tony Crisp explaining to us as he comes over to share with us. They did a good job with that. Now, if this was the NBA, I think. Um, Vincent would have got fined for a flop. <laughs> right? They put the rule in. It was good acting, though. That was a flop, though. I mean, he would have gotten fined five grand. I don't know how they, I think it's a warning, maybe right. one or two, and then you start getting fined. He'd be uh, headed for the fine, Vincent, there. And then he immediately grabbed for the jersey to go over his mouth to cover the cut that he never got hit Honestly, with. kids are funny. He looked like he got shot. And he almost said, oh, he had to have gotten it. And then he covered his mouth on top. That was pretty good. So Fillmore, after thinking that he was going to be teed up, heads to the line and makes the first. You know, I'm sitting here, Brad, saying, boy, I can't see it. I must be, what am I missing here? I'm missing that because it didn't happen. 
<laughs> he made two. Now three of eight from the line. Well, it's good. The referees, that's what going to the moment is good for that. It's very good. Got everything completely right. And Xavier's back in front. Chaz Williams is completely out of sorts. Vincent into the paint, nice dump pass. off to Putney. They were patient on that set. Yeah, that was not good defense by Xavier. They allowed the guy to sneak behind and didn't see where he was. Redford for three. I can't tell you how good a play Stanger made there. He knew he got the ball from one side of the floor and he knew that Redford was right there opposite and he threw it right to him. Xavier back in front, and Williams is on the board at the 13-35 mark, his first points of the game. This team can light it up from the three-point line. And that shot came because Chaz Williams was forcing the issue. After a made basket, he pushed the ball up the floor. Xavier was backpedaling and wasn't really ready. And he gives it to him. He hands it off to Vincent, and Vincent knocks it out. And back and forth we go. Six ties, nine lead changes. Kristen to the glass. Not it up one more time. And here comes UMass attacking again after a made basket. That time Xavier a better job of getting back in transition. Riley will let fly and drain it. Wow. There's a lot of fire going on now. The seesaw back and forth. Kristen on the drive again, and he got fouled. Nice UMass ball. offense coming from deep, Coach. Great job by Chaz Williams nice there, finding Vincent in transition. And then Riley, you know, Redford's got to get up on him a little bit more because he's smaller. Third foul on LaLanne sends Kristen to the line. Third team foul on UMass. The pace of this game right now, Brad, not good for Xavier because Xavier has trouble scoring. UMass wants the game. They want to be able to get over 70. Xavier's got to slow this tempo down a little bit now. Kristen misses the first. Taylor will check in, as will Carter. Lelane will sit down with his third foul. Stanger will sit as Taylor comes back in. Kristen with five assists today. Looking for his 11th point. And got it. UMass by two. Williams into the paint, wheeling and dealing. Wow. Xavier's got to start to dial in the half court defense a little bit better. Largest lead of the game for the Minutemen. Tristan with a head fake, off balance. Can't get it, Putney the rebound. Here comes Williams. Riley for three more. That's short. Escho the rebound. Kristen on Williams. He'll take it into the paint. Williams for three. That won't go long rebound. Carter. Riley. Yes. UMass, it seems like it might be this basket here. Everybody gets offensive rebound on this end of the floor. The offensive rebound this time turned into three more. UMass is starting to light it up now. And a lot of it starts with this guy here, Jazz Williams. And then throw it out to Riley on fire. Hold on to me as we go.
It's time to pursue our dreams, to chase what we believe in. It's time to work, to give it our very all and not give up. American Family Insurance believes your dreams deserve the best protection. That's why we're committed to being there for you every step of the way. What are you doing? Work. Work. CDW configured these Lenovo ThinkPad Ultrabooks with Intel Core i7 processors, so we can work anywhere. Anywhere? Sure. On the beach, in the woods, at the lake. What about on the green? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Ooh. Yes! Man, I love this place. I wish the tournament lasted longer. This just in, the tournament has expanded to 256 teams. What does this mean? We're in? We're in? We're, We're in? in? We're in! We're in! We're, We're definitely in. in. Buffalo Wild Wings, Wings, Beer, Sports, and the official hangout of March Madness. We're in! Largest lead of the afternoon for the Minutemen. Seven points as we take a look at the Reese's perfect play coach. Well, they've been knocking it down from three, but there was an example of a nice play inside. Brad Redford let Putney get behind him, as you see there, but a good pass and a good finish. But right now, this game is going way too fast for Xavier. They cannot keep up this pace because they can't score that much, and their defense is kind of letting them down now, letting UMass light it from three-point line. Well, to your point, six of ten from threes in the second half for the Minutemen, and Xavier is shooting 70% in the second half, seven of ten. They trail by seven. Yeah, they're getting them two at a time, and UMass getting them three at a time. Big difference. Chaz with his first five of the game. The first two came at the 13 and a half minute mark. <laughs> Taylor with Esho on him. We'll take it in, dump it out. Davis on the baseline. Tried to dump off, saved, got it blocked. Williams coming the other way. D. Davis is a good player, but he's really struggled today. Esho for three. Tap to Davis, he's on the run. Got Redford on one side. Lines up and buries. This guy doesn't need much space, though, either. Redford now with 13 points on the afternoon. Williams, the jump stop and travel. Nice defense by Xavier on that set. They trail by five. Derek Foddy got bumped on that. They've gotten a little one. It's been a little bumping today. Oh, yeah, this is Taylor out high. And Williams picked up his fourth. Wow. And, you know, Chaz is telling Derek Gillum, no, I'll stay, but he got to go. <laughs> Here comes Trey Davis. Oh, he got to go. And he was the key to the first half for the minute, man, as you look at this one again. Yeah, that's a bad play. That's a foul. That is not what you do with three fouls. Period. Vincent and Lalane back in. Esho and Carter to sit. And you know what, Brad? He was really the, he was kind of the engine here. He's been making this whole thing go. Even he's been pushing the ball up the floor. He's been putting a lot of pressure on Xavier. It's going to be a loss without him now for you, Matt. We'll see if Trey Davis can do this now in the second half. Just under the 10-minute mark when Williams sits down this time. You know, Trey Davis did it in the first half. Now it's nitty-gritty time on the road. He had Redford. Taylor couldn't get it out. And they'll call traveling. He got double teamed. Redford was open. Couldn't get the ball to him. Yeah, right now, if there's a guy you want to get it to, who's got a half, who's any kind of open, it's Redford. Old 
already five turnovers this half for the Musketeers. And they started with three on their first three possessions. Vincent. Kept alive, Redford collects. Thought about it. Trey Davis did a good job there closing out on Redford, because you're right, he thought about it. And they'll call a charge on Taylor. I think that was a flop. That's four on Travis. You think another flop? I think Vincent, he deserves like a double academy. We'll give him an Emmy and an academy tonight. Oh, come on. <laughs> There's no way that he got blasted out. <laughs> he keeps going after it, doesn't he? You know what? Tonight he may get an Emmy, an Oscar, and a Tony. We'll go for all three. But he won't get fined. No, he won't get fined. <laughs> Well, Coach, you said it. Xavier had seven turnovers in the first half. They have six so far in the second. And now Putney collects the foul, trying to get position on Brad Redford. Yeah, they're starting to pile up now, and especially when you don't play a real fast tempo like Xavier does. They average about 13 a game. That's a lot when you play a slow tempo. He has a size advantage. A little wraparound. Five team fouls on each squad. Five-point game. Kristen into the paint, off balance, and they will call a foul. They got Putney again, and they will call it on the shot, sending Kristen to the line. Putney collects his fourth. Kristen, three of four from the line, makes another. Hey, join us tonight, 7 Eastern. CBS presents 75 years of NCAA March Madness. Ultimate bracket unveiled by Northwestern Mutual Insurance. You'll join us tonight at 7 o'clock. Kristen with both. He's got 13. The lead is three for UMass. You know, they've withstood that barrage of threes to only be down three. They're very fortunate right now, Xavier. And now Chaz Williams on the bench again. Vinson wants a clear out. Ten on the shot clock. Davis. Into the paint. Off the glass. Nice play there. Ties his career high with 12. And we've got a timeout because Davis lost contact, it appears. Take a look at his move into the paint. Well, he made a nice move here, but no help from Samaje there. He just waves at him. That's what we used to call Matador defense. You got to move your feet and stop that penetration instead of just waving at him. Ole, ole. The contact goes back in. Davis with a career-high 12 points. Subbing for Chaz Williams. Oh, hey, buddy. It's your great granddad here. In case you haven't noticed, I'm kind of busy fighting for your freedom in the Second World War. But now, you're using that freedom to hurl insults at celebrities on Twitter? Listen, hashtag, you're not gonna fight like a man. You at least shave like a man. Stop LOLing everything! How do you engineer a true automotive breakthrough? You give it bold style, unsurpassed luxury, and nearly 1,000 improvements. The redesigned 2013 GLK. The next great advance from Mercedes-Benz, starting at 37,090. So Clint, are race car drivers really athletes? Jim, are you serious? Feast your eyes on my motor skills. 
my strength and agility, my mental acuity. And I feel alert and energetic, I take five hour energy. I guess you are pretty athletic. Thanks, Jim. For someone who sits in a car for a living. What? Nothing. Tuesday night, Xavier hosted Memphis, the 19th team in the country. Undermanned, underdog. They dominated the glass, and they held on to win 64-62. And against not only a quality team, but a team that hadn't lost on the road all year. And they gave up a big lead. And when you give up a big lead, sometimes it's hard to get it back, and they got it back enough to get a big win right there. So let's take a look at their tournament resume. Is it too late for the Musketeers, Coach? I, I think it's a tad late, no doubt about it. Now, if they win their last couple of games and get to the A-10 final, then we can talk about it again. The thing that hurts them is their RBI is 84. And those two losses to Walford and Pacific, and Walford being here, yeah. really makes it a bad loss. So they're not done yet, but they absolutely are on the brink. But I think, let me say this, Chris Mack has done a tremendous job with this team. This team struggles offensively. They only have two guards on the whole team that can really handle the ball. I think they're tremendous defensively. They play really hard. I don't think he could have done a better job with this group. So, I know, hey, look, how about this? They lose Des Wells, and they lose Mark Lyons. How about those two guys on your team? You think they make a difference? Fairly significant oh, losses God. for this team. They have opportunities. They'll get St. Louis and Butler to close it out. They have opportunities, but they're going to have to go on a heck of a run against a bunch of good teams. Trail by five. Kristen, again, into the paint. Had it blocked, knocked out of bounds, will stay with Xavier with six on the shot clock. Well, you know what it is, Brad. They do all the things that take a lot of effort. They're, they're plus five rebounds over their opponents. They're one of the best defensive teams in the league. So they do everything that takes effort. The problem is they have trouble scoring. Davis. And five. Well, that helps. Bailed out. The little man was the only option on the inbounds. And he gets it the low. That was not good defense whatsoever by Trey Davis that time. That was a little bit too easy. Three on Sampson Carter. And you see Davis's season numbers. Can't get the three-point play. I think you have to try to get Lelaine involved a little bit. I think he's a tough matchup for them. He's, I think he's pretty good. Threw it away. Wow. Davis wasn't looking, but he takes it back. That's a bad pass. D. Davis, that was a really bad pass. You got to throw a bounce pass there if you're going to throw anything. Riley for three, you bet. These guys. I tell you, they're fun to watch. The lead is six for the Minutemen. Because they don't think twice about letting it go. Now 11 of 23 from behind the arc. D. Davis can't answer, but Robinson can. Vincent did not even turn around and look for a body to box out. Vincent for three. Eh, I give up two down there, but I get you a three down this end. <laughs> Confidence is a funny thing, coach. You just can't let them score three at a time. Got to kick the ball. And boy, are they warm from behind the arc. Well, Riley, nobody's out there, Ron. That's a late find by Fillmore. And then here, Vincent, he's kind of open, too. Those are not hard threes, those two there. Eight of 13 are the Minutemen from behind the arc this half. And, you know, Xavier is one of the best in the A-10 at defending the three-point shot. They're getting drilled from the line today. Down low on the block, Taylor. Haven't heard from him in a while. Fillmore for three. And Derek Kellogg throws his arms up in disgust. Well, the guy's one for 12 on the season. <laughs> So you'd be surprised by this? I guess this is a little bit surprising, but I guess Fillmore wasn't surprised. He's wide open. 
But if you're one for 12, I can understand it. Let it fly. Who thinks more is better than less? Okay, why? More is better than less because if stuff is not less, if there's more less stuff, then you might you might want to have some more, and your parents just don't let you because there's only a little bit. Right. We want more. We want more. Like you really like it. You right. want more. I follow you. It's not complicated. More is better, and AT and T has the nation's largest 4G network. Weather conditions aren't nearly as nice as where we came from, but the wind chill is 10 below. Flight attendants, prepare for it. We have record lows out there, so bundle up and thank you for flying with us. Now with my Buick Remote Start, the new Buick Enclave makes sure you're ready for anything. Just one more way, the new Enclave is smart, made, beautiful. My mother made the best toffee in the world. It's delicious. So now we've turned her toffee into a business. My goal was to take an idea and make it happen. I'm Janet Long and I form my toffee company through LegalZoom. I never really thought I would make money doing what I love. We created LegalZoom to help people start their business and launch their dreams. Go to LegalZoom.com today and make your business dream a reality. At LegalZoom.com, we put the law on your side. UMass up by four. 5.52 remaining in this, and they have done it from behind the arc, Coach. Are, are you kidding me? Eight for 13 this half from the three-point line. They have been on complete fire against the team that was top two in the league in defending the three-point shot. So they've done what they've had to do in the second half here. And on the road, you've got to be impressed with that. Take a look at the AT&T game summary. You know, 12 for 24 from the three-point line is not getting it done on the defensive side. Most three points in a game this year for UMass, so uh, Xavier, and the problem with Xavier is they don't make a lot of threes. They make five. That's where this game is going right now. Yeah, Xavier has never given up 12 threes this year. And UMass finding the space and letting them fly inside the lane who has been quiet this afternoon at half hook too long Taylor the rebound speaking of quiet Taylor had nine in the first half scoreless in the second yeah he has been non-existent and with all that you match great shooting they're up four wants to back Carter in and they will call one on Carter and they're in the bonus. That's his fourth personal foul. 18 foul. Four on Carter. Here comes Williams, coach. Trey Davis will sit. And Williams with four fouls. They'll add Putney. I think that's a good move by Derek Kellogg. I think that's the right time. Still up four. They got a little bit of a cushion. Not seven like they were, though. So it's a good time to bring Chaz Williams back in. Taylor, one of two from the line this afternoon. Good on the first, he'll get another. Had four very early rebounds, only has five on the game. Yeah, he was a terror in the first four minutes of the game. Looking for his 10th double-double on the season. Can't get the second. He has been the leader over the last six games for the Musketeers, both in scoring and in rebounding. Knocked away. Can't save it. Well, they went into the lane two possessions in a row. Which is probably a good move because you got to figure that Xavier's going to be out on those three-point shooters, so Lelaine's going to be in there by himself. Got it to Lelaine. Working on Fillmore. Defense is there, and he gets the putback. Well, it's obvious that they made a point of that's where they want the ball right now. Push the lead back to five. Robinson, short jumper on the baseline, won't go. Tip, Taylor, can't collect. Lelaine's got it, here comes Williams. 
Robinson's got to make that. He, that's, you can't get a better shot. the rebound. Throw it away. That's a bad mistake. Riley. Offensive. Redford's taken a couple of those today. And he's actually been hit. Not yeah. like Vincent. No, not like Vincent. Let's see Redford here. Does a good... Good job getting into the spot. a lot of thinking on a bike about your life family your dreams one of my dreams came to me on a bike to open up my own shop so what happens when you complete a dream well you just start thinking of the next Basketball on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Principal Financial. It's time to see your financial future. It's time to dream again with the Principal. By Napa, Napa Know How. And by Avis, where a car is much more than a rental, it's your space. Just outside the city of Cincinnati. Long Victory Parkway, Sintas Center, five-point lead for UMass. Let's take a look at the I-File and the tournament resume for UMass. Well, that RPI of 57 puts them very close. They need to get some... This, this game today is big. Their game against Butler at home is big. They don't need to do as much with the rest of their year as Xavier, but winning today and beating Butler and then doing something in the A-10 tournament is going to put them in a decent position. Jared Kellogg. Hoping that that's the case. His Close. team leads by five. I Close. think if we were picking the tournament today, they would just be out. But they absolutely have time to play themselves in. Robinson, baseline. He mailed that one. Back within three, and the crowd's back into it at the Cintas Center. Thought about it. Well, he, you can't give him that much room. Taylor better get up on Vincent. Williams into the paint. Back outside for Riley and three more. That was a great play by Chaz Williams. The penetration and the extra help by Xavier. They probably shouldn't have helped that much there because Riley and Vincent have been lighting this thing up. Back by six. Big shot there. Taylor into the paint. Drive with the left, can't get the roll. Sintas Center, Cincinnati, Ohio. Big one for both. Brad Johansson alongside the coach, Steve Lapis. Two and a half minutes to play and a six-point lead for the Minutemen. Oh. 
Robinson knocked it away with 11 on the shot clock. Take a look at this last three by UMass. Watch the penetration by Jazz Williams, and Redford comes over to help and leaves Riley alone. You know what? If I were them, the way they've been lining up from three, I would make Jazz Williams at, at his size finish at the rim rather than to give too much help now because these guys have been lighting it up from three. Riley's made six shots. They've all been threes. He's got 18, six of 10 from behind the arc. Williams inside the arc. Robinson the rebound. Redford can't get the shot off. This time he will. Not there. Taylor saves. He's out of bounds. See, that time they, they did a good job, UMass, that time. They made Redford rush a little bit more than he's used to. Now three of five is Redford from behind the arc. The lead is six. I'm not a big fan of holding the ball here. I think you should use the whole, I'm not saying you should shoot quick, use the whole shot clock to get a good shot. Now UMass is going to use about nine seconds to get a good shot. I still think they need to get good shot. They're only up six, and there's a minute and 40 to go. Help on Williams. He dumps down low to Vincent. Too hard. Tap goes. Lalane was there. Eight-point lead, 125 to play. The largest lead for the Minutemen all afternoon. Kristen creates to the glass. Timeout, Matt. One sixteen remaining in a six-point lead. What's UMass doing to create here, Coach? Well, UMass is really looking to do a lot, a lot of little things now because they do a good job of getting on the offensive glass here. Lelaine is a tough guy to get out of there because he's pretty big and strong. And he makes it now he gets good position. You see how Lelaine almost boxed out his man and his team was on offense a so good job by Lalane getting that inside position to make sure he's able to tip that ball in the basket and it's a big rebound Xavier out rebounding the Minutemen by 10 as they have out rebounded 15 of their last 17 opponents now at this point UMass needs to hold the ball and use as much clock as they can if I'm Xavier I would not foul yet I would put some pressure on him Try and stop him for one more possession, get the rebound, and try and score. I don't think Xavier should, uh, should foul yet. They only have five fouls. UMass with nine. Well, they could be aggressive trying to track. Got it across. I agree with what Chris Mack is doing here. They're doubling up, but they're not looking to foul. On the baseline and a foul, a walk. Wow. Thought they were going to get a foul on D. Davis, but they got a walk on Putney. Darren Kellogg did a, did a run down the bench that time. He uh, couldn't believe it either. Xavier down by six. That's a big turtle. Kristen creates jump stop foul. Well, that's exactly what you want. Then, if you're Xavier, you want two foul shots. The you clock stops. That's Double bonus now. Tenth team foul on UMass. 46.8 left on the clock. They don't have to use a timeout now to set up their pressure. And they still, if he makes two here, they still don't have to foul again. Tristan good on the first. You know, it, I take that back. It's one of those danger zones. Some coaches down four or 47 seconds ago would foul. Some would try and play it out. But you really, you're only leaving yourself 12 seconds in a two possession game. I would probably foul here. They're saying that Robinson has to go back to where he was. If you're Xavier, you want to set up your pressure. Try and get a steal. I think once the ball crosses half court, you foul. Good on both. Here's the pressure coming now. I think you still have a foul to give. UMass has the possession arrow. They need to foul because they got a foul to give. They're going to have to foul twice. They need to foul. 
Robinson has four. He doesn't want to foul. It's not one and one yet. This is a problem. They need to foul. Taylor doesn't want to foul. Do they get the turnover? Vincent is fouled by Kristen. But now they're still going to take the ball out again. It's not one and one yet. And the shot clock resets. Yeah, that was not good. Shot clock is now off. That was, was at 13, Coach. That was a big mistake. Timeout, Xavier. So a four-point lead for UMass. They have the ball, 24.5. How big has Terrell Vincent been today, Coach? He's been terrific in this game. And he does a lot of things. In the, he does it in the mid post. He does it from the three-point line. He does a little bit of everything all over the place. And he is another guy who has stepped up big time since Morgan has been out, who was their second leading scorer. So you got to give Vincent a lot of credit. That's what you expect. You expect your experienced guys to give you the kind of lift you need on the road. He now has 122 starts. That is number one all time for UMass as he passes Jim McCoy from 88 to 92. And he has been sharp today. Vincent now with 20, four triples. As you see the game reset, UMass with the possession arrow. And Xavier can send them to the line now with the next foul. They have to right away. They must foul. Kristen fouls Williams. We'll send him with 20.8 left. They should have fouled with 40. They needed to foul right away because they had one to give. They're down. They, the one to give doesn't help you in this situation. If anything, it hurts you because it makes you use more clock. Williams 0 for 2 from the line today. James Farr, a three-point shooter, and Brad Redford as well will check into the game here when they desperately need points. Fillmore will sit, as will Robinson. Carter to check in, Lelaine to sit. Coming up next, Simon Frazier in Western Washington, a D2 battle right here on CBS Sports Network. Don't go away. Williams good on the first, five point lead for the Minutemen. Get the second. Still two possessions. Oh. Williams goes up and gets it and calls timeout. How big is that? Yeah, it was a bad pass. It's a good steal, but it was a bad pass. The 5'9 kid with a little vertical got up when they needed him to get up. Oh, no, he's as athletic as you could be at his size. And a good job there knowing if he stands up, it's going to be a travel. So he stays down. Good job there. He uses his right knee as his pivot foot. <laughs> he had a pivot knee there. Nine turnovers this half for the Musketeers. 15.4 left on the clock. And they trail by five. Let's take a look at the Napa play of the game. It probably has to come from behind the arc, doesn't well, it, Coach? It definitely does. And you can take your pick as to who, but the one by Riley was really a big one. So, you know, they made enough of them, so you could have picked a few, but that was probably the biggest of the three. 13 of 25 from behind the arc are the Minutemen. Men. Inbound. Davis fouls Williams, so go back to the line. Yeah, in this kind of a game, Brad, where you give up 77 points and you're Xavier, you can't win because they can't score enough. If you only make four threes a game and you're giving up, you give up 77, very hard to win. The most threes they've allowed all season. Their D let them down in the second half. It's been there for them all year, but today, and you know, part of it was their D, part of it was UMass was on fire. They average giving up only 61.8 points per game, second in the A-10 behind St. Louis. D. Davis has to let fly off balance. It's an air ball. Riley has it, and that will do it. Big win for UMass. 
And a tough one for the Musketeers who desperately needed something on the resume today. UMass still got a chance. 77-72 for Steve Lapis, our entire crew. I'm Brad Johansson saying so long from Cincinnati, Ohio for scores, highlights, features, and more. Go to CBSSports.com. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Now let's go to Jason Knapp and Lisa Byington with the call of Simon Frazier at Western Washington. Good afternoon, everyone.